In this movie, you explore various ways of using ambient occlusion in 3ds Max. First, a few words about ambient occlusion, or AO for short. Ambient occlusion was invented by Industrial Light and Magic in 2002 as they were working on the movie Pearl Harbor. It is meant to simulate global illumination without requiring full GI computations. The shader was written to occlude, that is, to block light from hitting a certain point. This is dependent on the object surrounding that point. Ambient occlusion starts from your position looking at the scene. Every single point visible to your eye gets calculated in the following way. A number of rays are cast from that point in a randomized hemispherical way out to do hit tests on the rest of the scene. You specify the number of rays to be cast. The more rays you specify, the better the result but the longer the rendering time. Some rays collide with other objects, some don't. The surface point is then shaded by a ratio of hit rays, in this case 2 over 6. The more occluded the point, and the darker it appears in the final render. For better results, you also define how far the rays travel. A travel distance of 0 makes the rays travel indefinitely. You usually want to define a distance that fits the scene well. Ambient occlusion is relatively fast. It can even be used in a scene that has no lights and still improve it tenfold. Let's put it to practical use. This scene is set inside a modern apartment. At this time, no lights are used and the render looks bland. The rendering engine is set to mentor ray, otherwise you cannot use ambient occlusion. Before you start working on the rendering, it is good practice to replace all materials by a neutral white to gray material that makes it easier to study and apply lighting. This can be done in the Render dialog, Processing tab. Enable the Material Override option and simply create and apply a standard material in that channel. If you tried rendering the scene now, it comes out as monochromatic, but still bland. However, the original materials are preserved and can be restored simply by disabling Material Override. Next, you will add Ambient Occlusion as a diffuse map to the override material. Instead of the gray diffuse color, choose the Mentor Ray Ambient Reflective Occlusion map. There are two important parameters to consider. The Samples value defines the number of rays to be cast from any given point. 16 is the default. More rays mean better quality but with more computing time. Max distance is the distance the rays travel before they can hit an obstacle. Set it to 1 meter for the scene. Before you render, notice that you added the ambient occlusion map to the diffuse channel of a standard material. Some materials, such as Arc and Design, have embedded AO channels in a separate rollout. Render the scene again to see the improvements. Notice how much better the details are, especially with the painting on the wall, the furniture, and the door frame on the right. Increase the sample's value to 32. Notice how the render shows less noise at the cost of longer render time. As you can see, this method works by using AO at the material level, in this case on a single material that overrides all others in the scene. This means that in a fully textured scene, you'd need to apply ambient occlusion on every material. Short of having a library of AO materials, this can be time-consuming. Disconnect the ambient occlusion shader from the material overrides diffuse channel. Next, you explore applying AO to a light rather than to a material. First, you need to add an outside light to simulate the sun, although AO works in interior lighting conditions as well. Although you can use AO with advanced lighting, you usually want to use it with simple lighting setups. Its whole purpose is to simulate complex lighting scenarios without the additional calculations. This is why you will use a simple light here to simulate the sun. Because of the override material, the windows are now opaque. With a right click on the main toolbar, display the layers toolbar. Turn off the 3D Kurt Wall Glaze layer, 
so that the light you create can enter the apartment. Create a mental ray area spot to simulate the sun. Set its angle downward at about 30 to 45 degrees for a nice afternoon sun. Alternatively, you can use a direct light, but the mental ray area spot gives better area shadows in case you decide to use them. Ensure the light is set to cast ray trace shadows. Set its light cone to be fully opened and increase its intensity to about 3 units. Render the scene. Notice the total absence of indirect lighting. You will provide the effect of global illumination using a single OmniLight. Add an OmniLight anywhere in the top view. In the OmniLight's advanced effects parameters, set the light to only affect ambient lighting in the scene. Set the light intensity to 1 and render the scene. The results are hardly satisfactory as the scene is now washed out in white. Expand the mental ray light shader rollout and enable that option. Using the slate material editor, instance the ambient occlusion map and use it as a light shader in the Omni Light. Other parameters such as light intensity or color become irrelevant as the light shader properties take over. If you need to adjust those values, you do it now at the ambient occlusion map level. Render the scene again. Notice the speed at which it renders a much improved result. Now you are using ambient occlusion as a light shader, which affects ambient lighting in the whole scene, thereby affecting all materials in that scene. Remember that this technique is not physically accurate. What you lose in lighting accuracy, you gain in rendering time. Finally, disable the material override, restore the glazing layer, enable the background map and render the scene in full colors and textures.